Hello, this is Jeremy, and we're going to go through today uh, how to do implicit differentiation. And I'm assuming mostly that you've looked through the other materials because what I decided to do this time was go through what I think are some of the more difficult problems. Now, as you've looked at the other materials, what I want you to notice is that this technique is for situations where y isn't written explicitly as a function of x. But in the end, y is still a function of x in some way. We don't know exactly in what way but that affects us when we're going to take the derivative. So notice here that in this example, we're finding dy dx, that's y prime, and that means the derivative of y with respect to x, when we know that we have this property, that 2x cubed y minus x cubed plus 5 equals 0. In other words, what this is essentially is y written in terms of x, but again, it's implicit. When you go through this, what you'll do is you'll take the derivative of x as usual, but then with y, you have to remember that's in terms of x. Okay, so we're really taking the derivative of both sides, but that means term by term, same thing. So I'm going to look here first, and the first thing I notice is that this is a product. So I'm going to apply the product rule to this. I'm going to write out the product twice, 2x cubed y plus 2x cubed y, and put a prime on this. We'll handle that in a minute, and a prime on this, which we'll handle in a minute as well. Okay, and then I take the derivative of this. Anytime you hit an x term, it's just like usual because this derivative is in terms of x. So this is a minus 3x squared. Derivative of 5 is 0. Derivative of 0 is 0, so I can just write equals 0. Okay, now what's going on here? This first term, 2x cubed prime, it's all in terms of x, so I take the derivative like usual. So this is a 6x squared, and then times a y, plus... This I'm not taking the derivative of, so I'll go ahead and write it again. And okay, y prime. y is in terms of x, we're just not sure in what way. The derivative of y is 1, but then I have to multiply by y prime because I don't know what y is in terms of x, so it's using the chain rule. So essentially I'm going to leave this as a y prime. And then this term we already took the derivative of, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Now remember what our goal is. Our goal is to have y prime equal something because we're finding dy dx. So I got to solve for y prime. So everything that doesn't have a y prime on it is going on the other side of the equation. So I'm going to leave the 2x cubed y prime and I'm going to have this equals. I'm going to bring this over. Since it's positive, it'll be negative because I'll subtract it from both sides. And over here, since this is negative, I'll have to add it to both sides. So when it gets to the other side of the equation, it'll be positive. Okay, now finally, I go ahead and divide because this is multiplying the y prime, so I get y prime equals minus 6x squared, y plus 3x squared, and then over 2x cubed. All right, notice that we have a factor here of x squared in everything. x cubed is just x squared times x. We got an x squared here and an x squared here, so actually I can cancel some stuff out. Um, let's see, this would be gone, this would be gone, and we would lose two of these, so we just be left with one. So another way to write this would be uh, equals minus 6y plus 3 over 2x. You could also, if you wanted to, factor out this 3, but that's kind of unnecessary. It's all kind of style at that point. But there's our final answer. So notice I still did stuff like the product rule and still took the derivative like normal, but when I hit a y, I had to apply the chain rule automatically because we don't know how y is written in terms of x exactly. Okay, let's look at another one, and uh, this one's a little more complicated. All right, when I look at this one, the first thing I see is that we have a composite function as the first term. You can think of it that way. We got a 2x minus y inside of a x to the fourth is one way to think about this. So I got to apply the chain rule. And once again, I'm finding dy dx, so that means I'm finding y prime. And so I'm going to take the derivative of each term, in other words, the derivative of both sides, d dx. Okay, when I go to, for this term, I'm going to have to apply the chain rule. So this is 4 times 2x minus y cubed. And then remember the chain rule, i got to multiply by the derivative of the inside, because I took the derivative of the outside function, so I multiply by 2x minus y prime, which we'll figure out in a minute. And now up here, I hit a minus y cubed. Okay, if this was a normal function, right, that'd just be minus 3y squared. Okay, but we don't know what y is in terms of x, so i got to use the chain rule here, too, and multiply by y prime. And then finally, the derivative of 8 is 0, so this equals 0. Okay, I need to get a y prime equals something, 
And so we're going to have to figure out how to solve for y prime, but I still haven't taken this derivative right here. So I got to figure out what that is first and then figure out how I'm going to get the y primes together. So I'm going to leave this term as it was. And I'm going to say, okay, derivative of, derivative of 2x is 2 and the derivative of minus y, well, that'd be minus 1, but we got to multiply by y prime. So minus 1 times y prime is minus y prime because, again, we don't know what y is in terms of x. And then this term stays the same. All right, to get this y prime out of here so that I can collect terms of y primes, I'm going to have to distribute, meaning this is going to have to multiply here, and this whole term is going to have to multiply here, and then I'll be able to collect terms of y primes. So when I hit this first term, the 2 multiplies the 4, so I get an 8 times 2x minus y cubed. And when I hit the minus y prime, I get a minus 4 y prime, and then I get this part right here, 2x minus y cubed. Okay, now this I didn't do anything to, so it stays. All right, so we have two terms with y prime, so they're going to stay on one side of the equation, and I'm going to bring the other piece to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to leave a minus 4y prime times 2x minus y cubed. I'm going to leave the minus 3y squared and then the y prime, and I'm going to bring over, I'm going to end up with minus 8, 2x minus y cubed over here. Now notice it's a minus 8 because I'd have to subtract it from both sides. Okay, so the question is, what do I do? I got two terms with y primes here. Well, if I want to solve for y prime, I got to get y prime by itself. The best way to do that would be to factor that out of these terms. So this is actually y prime times minus 4. So notice it's this term without the y prime, 2x minus y cubed. And then take out the y prime here. This is minus 3y squared. And then this equals the minus 8, etc. Now I have y prime times something, so to get y prime by itself, I divide. So I end up with y prime equals minus 8, 2x minus y cubed, and then all divided by all of this. So minus 4 times 2x minus y cubed, and then minus 3y squared. I didn't change the signs because I'm dividing this time. I'm not adding or subtracting from both sides. However, there's a minus 1 as a factor here, here, and here. So minus 1 is a factor of the numerator and the denominator. So you could actually, if you wanted to, write this out as 8 times 2x minus y cubed over minus 4, well, this would now be positive 4, 2x minus y cubed. And this would now be positive 3y squared. And all that is because we were able to change signs on everything. You wouldn't have to leave that plus there, of course. Uh, we would change signs on everything because we factor it out of minus 1. Either one of these is fine as a final answer. This is one of those things where if you're working suggested problems or something, the textbook might have one version of the answer, and you have the other, and you have to compare. Now, I decided for my last example that I'm going to show you to do something different so you don't just get obsessed with the, okay, if I see a y, I'm going to multiply by y prime, etc., it's all about which is a function of the other. So here, this problem says find x prime. So we have x in terms of t. So x is somehow defined in terms of t implicitly. So we don't know exactly x equals what in terms of t. We just know it equals something in terms of t. And if I'm trying to find x prime, what I'm really finding is dx dt, the derivative of x with respect to t. So what I'm going to do is take d dt, the derivative with respect to t of everything. When I do that and I hit the x squared, for instance, well, like usual, I can say, okay, that's 2x. But the problem is I don't know what x is in terms of t, so i got to multiply by x prime. Okay, I hit the next term. That's a minus, right? And it's a product, a t squared times an x. So I'm going to write out the product twice. I'm using the product rule. First thing gets prime. Second thing gets prime. Okay, next term, t cubed. Well, if I was taking a derivative like usual, that would be plus 3t squared. And since this derivative is in terms of t, then that's okay. I don't have to multiply by anything. And then the derivative of 11 is 0, and the derivative of 0 is 0. So this equals 0. Notice that we almost always end up with something like that. It's just to help simplify things. The textbook has not put things on both sides. 
if you ended up with variables over here, you can always move them over first and it makes things a little bit easier. All right, I still have a little bit of stuff to handle inside of these parentheses, so I'm going to rewrite this as 2x, x prime. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative now, so this will be minus. The derivative of t squared would be 2t, right? And because this is in terms of t, I can leave it that way, and then it'll be x plus t squared. And now the derivative of x is 1, but x is in terms of t, and this derivative is with respect to t. So I have to multiply by x prime. I have to leave it. And then I get plus 3t squared equals 0. Now here's the thing, this sign right here. I should fix this right now. The negative distributes, right? That's the risk of doing something in the same step. This should actually be a negative. So let's go ahead and fix that right now. OK, what do I do now? x prime, x prime. I need those terms because I want to solve for x prime. That's what I'm trying to find. So we got 2x x prime minus t squared x prime, and then this equals, okay, if I bring this over, it'll be positive, so it's going to be a 2tx. If I bring this over, it's going to be negative because I'm subtracting from both sides, so I got minus 3t squared. Now I can factor out an x prime, just like we've been doing. I get a 2x minus t squared equals all this stuff. So now it's all just algebra, right? Everything so far calculus-wise starts up here, just like we've been doing the whole semester, and then after that it's all algebra. Now to solve for x prime, i got to divide both sides by this. So I get x prime equals this divided by this. So 2tx minus 3t squared divided by 2x minus t squared. Okay, so this looks like, let's see if there's any common factors. I don't see anything I can cancel, right? I can't cancel these t squareds because it's not a factor of everything. So this looks like my final answer here. So once again, you have to pay attention to what variable you're working with. And once you figure out what variable you're working with, then pay attention to what's it written in terms of. So when I say x prime, I'm saying dx dt. So the derivative is with respect to t. And that's what's causing what you see going on here. Similar when we were doing the previous problems.